They've almost finished loading our cargo. We should be ready to depart right on schedule, or so I'm told. Excellent. It is nice to have a smooth beginning to one's journey, at the very least. It's funny. Master Louis Soir came here on a ship very much like this one. And now, years later, the street urchin he befriended that day is bound for his mentor's homeland. With his mentor's grandchildren, no less. Aye. Tis upon reflection that every twist of time's river and fate's whims are brought into sharp relief. Thou hast matured much in the intervening years. Wert thou not caught attempting to relieve Master Louisois of his purse scant moments after he made landfall upon this dock? Oh, really? Now oh, that's a tale I'd like to hear. Will this be your first visit to Charlian, Sir Estinian? Sir Estinian? <sighs> Are we strangers newly met? Why this stiff formality? I, uh, merely meant it as a professional courtesy, since we are now colleagues in an official sense. I'd rather you dispense with the sirs, especially in private company. Or I'll be forced to respond in kind, little Lord Alphano. You've made your point, Estinian. Painfully well. <laughs> Better. Are you all right, Tataru? You seem positively distraught. Distraught? Me? Don't be silly. I think it's lovely that they get to see their homeland. It's just... We're trying to thwart the schemes of an army hell-bent on destroying the world. And, once again... I have to stay behind and worry that this is the last time I'll get to see my friends. I'll hold you to that. Ah, oh, good. You're still here. What brings you all this way? We're to assist the Maelstrom and the Cobbles with a lunar primal operation, so we thought we'd see you off before heading to the tower. Flamine and the others wish you all a safe journey, and promise that they'll look after things here until you return. We will too, of course. Aye. We, your fellow scions of the Seventh Dawn, will do our part to ensure the end of the world won't happen on our watch. We set the sail. All aboard for Charlian. It's time. Then we must delay no longer. We will contact you the moment we learn aught of value. Wish us luck. Have a safe journey, and please, please, be careful.
And so you venture forth unto the unknown. A fate beyond the horizon that cannot be divined. A future undefined and in flux. In uncertain times, naught but the simplest words of wisdom will suffice. That which lives is destined to die. Love leads to loss. Every beginning has an end. Treasure every moment, every step of your descent. And there, in the depths where souls and stars rest, find your truth. The day has barely dawned, my fellow earlier riser. Though we're hardly alone in that. Envious of those still sleeping soundly, no doubt. Called out to you, you say? Hmm. I've heard nothing myself. In any case, I dare say the sea air will do you good. Why not join the others on deck? Charlian should be coming into view at any moment. My voice yet reaches you. I am glad. Hear. Feel. Think. And thus do we meet face to face at last. My warrior of light, guided by the crystal. After your sojourn in the first, I believe you have your answer. You have gained an understanding of what I truly am, what Eidolon has always been, a primer.
Zodiac was created to forestall the apocalypse which threatened the ancient world, and I was brought forth to bind him. Yet seven times now, those who would orchestrate a return to that bygone era have rejoined a shard to the god I had sundered. The greater his strength grows, the swifter does mine own diminish. The power to draw your mind into the rift betwixt is no longer mine to wield. Yet though it taxes me sorely, I dare not leave these words unsaid. Even bereft of my guidance, you and your companions have accepted the burden of this star's troubled past. A conjunction has begun to form, an intertwining of your time and mine. Wheels shudder and turn. Conflict looms, monumental, which will decide the fate of this world and all life upon it. When you truly understand what is at stake, and your journey has prepared you to surmount the insurmountable, then shall I honor the promise made in another time, another age. Cast your peepers to the fore, folks. Charlians, just over yonder. I will not keep you further. Your traveler's heart must yearn to behold this unfamiliar land. We shall meet again, and soon. A good morning to you too. Taken a look at the island already? Then let's go. Let's go. Might still be room in the prow if we're lucky. Ah, the sleepers have arisen. There she is. <laughs> Good old Charlian. Oh, I see it. Home. Home at last. Well, maybe not in father's eyes. But we'll manage on our own, if we must. You do know you're not alone in this, don't you? Indeed, tis as Sir Estinian said. Forget not the comrades who boarded this ship at your side, I pray. Thank you, my friends. We are ever grateful for your steadfast support. Upon arrival, we will be disembarking into the heart of Charlian proper. There is no greater concentration of wisdom in all the world. I am confident that somewhere within that center of knowledge and learning, we will find the answers we seek.
Charlian, the solitary island nation of the Northern Seas. Where under the watchful gaze of Thaliac, patron deity of scholars, academics hoard all manner of knowledge and secrets. Once, they deigned to accept foreign students into a distant colony maintained in the Dravanian hinterlands. How swiftly they abandoned it once the first Garlean boot set hostile foot on Alamegan soil. So averse to the prosecution of war, these men of wisdom, your would-be allies. I thought they'd never let us off the ship. What's next then? Entry applications? Hopefully they find no cause to deny us. Hasn't Charlie and Orbit severed relations with foreign powers? Those of us without direct ties, myself included, may be refused outright. It is true that, as a nation, Charlian only forms trade agreements with a select few neutral countries. But from a practical standpoint, an island cannot afford to be overly strict with its borders. Especially not if that island's people are wholly devoted to the accumulation of knowledge. If one submits the proper paperwork, with satisfactory evidence of identity and intent, then foreigners may be granted entry. May. Quite. So let us be absolutely clear on these points before we proceed. The immigration officer will ask for your affiliation and your purpose of visit. Considering Charlian's views on intervention, I strongly suggest we avoid any mention of the Scions. Crown has laid the groundwork for us to act as associates of the students of Baldessian, and our ostensible reason for being here is to aid in their order's restoration. Grahatia, it might expedite our progress should an actual student be seen at the head of our little group. Would you mind leading the way? Of course. The immigration officers were this way, as I recall. Shall we? Greetings. We've just arrived and are eager to make our way into the city. Would you be so kind as to process our entry applications? Certainly. I see by your mark you are an Archon. I am. Vrahat here of the students of Baldessian at your service. I was assigned to an Aeorsian survey team, but have returned to assist with the reformation of my order. My associates here will provide additional support. Very good. I have paperwork detailing your group and its scheduled arrival for today. And it seems some few of your companions are also Archons. If you'll step forward, we can process those applications first. Ishtola rule. See how it glows. That list is etherically linked with the citizen registry kept in the main repository. I've confirmed your status as Archons and amended your travel records accordingly. Welcome home. Now, who do we have here?
Alphano Leveilleur. And Alizé Leveilleur. Your applications have also been approved. Having said that... The streets are abuzz with talk of how House Leveilleur's Lord disowned his young progeny. And while such personal circumstances constitute no reason to deny you entry, I urge you to avoid exacerbating your present situation. Times are quite troubled enough already. We shall keep that in mind. These last two are not Charlian natives, but you will find their credentials are in order. An application was made in advance. Hmm. Name and occupation? And it is a title well earned, I can assure you. An adventurer by trade is what your documentation indicates. No mention of this particular title. Self-appointed, I take it. Either way, your employer seems willing to vouch for your character, so I shall, albeit reluctantly, grant you entry. Champion. And you, sir? Estinian Valino, formerly of the Order of the Knights Dragoon in Ishgard. Formerly, at least. And what, pray tell, is your profession now? associate is a mercenary, hired for his strength at arms. Surely you are aware of the dangers we often face on our forays into the wilderness. Mistress Baldessian, if you insist on sponsoring his entry, then so be it. But while I appreciate that desperate times call for desperate measures, I find your choice of company concerning. Be advised that even a single misstep may have severe repercussions for your organization. I have every confidence in my chosen company, dear and trusted comrades that they are, but I thank you for your concern. Croyle! It is good to see you. Likewise. Long voyage notwithstanding, you will seem none the worse for wear. There is much to discuss, but this is hardly the place. Let's be on our way, shall we? Friends to Charlian. As your mercenary, I should hope my welcome includes a generous salary. Well, I had to say something, Sir Taciturn.
Pray forgive me. I was delayed. It's fine, Orianger. We're all here now. Let's get down to business then, shall we? Come what may, we must prevent the Telophoroi's plans from coming to fruition. At present, I see two paths for gathering the information which may aid us in achieving that goal. The first involves an investigation into the change which has come over Charlian, not to mention the recent inscrutable behavior of the Forum. As most of you know, the 99 members of the Forum are elected from the general populace. This alone guarantees a plethora of opinion with regards to foreign policy. The Bibliotechs, for example, are a group of conservatives which would have Charlian focus on recording history, while remaining entirely uninvolved in the making of it. And at the other extreme, we have advocates for proactive diplomacy and direct intervention. My grandfather Galef was one such member, as was Archon Louisois. Yet despite our diverse factions and philosophies, the recent vote to deny Eorzea's request for assistance was unanimous. Even more concerning was the fact that many cited other, more pressing duties as justification for their recalcitrance. Fortuno's refusal in Gridania had those same undertones. It was as if, having stared unblinking into the face of impending doom, he had simply turned away to pursue something more important. But what could that possibly be? A mystery indeed, and one which I ask for your help to solve. Our future may depend on it. As for our second potential path, it concerns a request made directly to the students of Baldessian. The organization was founded primarily to study strange and unexplained phenomena the world over. Mysterious relics and ruins, arcane disturbances, and so forth. Compared to our more isolationist Charlie and colleagues, we have strong connections overseas, namely with scholars and academics who share our passion for the unknown. The request in question comes from one such acquaintance, Nidana, an alchemist residing in distant Favner. Her missive describes the sudden appearance of a tower, and the subsequent summoning of what I can only assume is a lunar primal. In response to this threat, the satrap of Rads at Han, the individual who governs the city-state, has instructed the alchemists to find a means to deal with the spire. The artisans of that land are heirs to an ancient tradition, one rather unlike that of their Uldan counterparts. It is possible, nay, probable, that they have gleaned truths unattainable by Eorzea or her Far Eastern allies. They do, in fact, appear to have a strategy in mind, though it will require further research. To that end, they have requested an introduction to a capable warrior shielded by the blessing of light. Assuming we divide our forces to pursue both of Kral's lines of inquiry, then having you join the group heading to Thavner would seem the obvious choice. But the investigation in Charlian is of vital importance as well. Equal, I think, to the Thavnerian one given that the fate of the world may hinge on the results of both. Yes, it is quite the quandary. Though it is a great imposition and an altogether too common one, our efforts would be more likely to succeed were you to lead the charge on both fronts. You are indeed our champion. As to which task to tackle first, we will defer to your decision. Let us next decide how everyone else might best be assigned. 
As for myself, I shall continue what I've begun in Charlian. I should also like to steal the services of an Archon or two. And thereby gain access to a greater range of reading material. I will help with that. Allow me to offer my assistance. I have some small amount of experience in the field of research. Alizé and I would also like to help, if you would have us. Anything to understand even a fraction of what our father and the Forum might be thinking. Of course, the more the merrier. Right, the rest of us will make the journey to Thavna. Thoughts, objections. I passed through Thavnir on my way to infiltrate the Empire, and though I'm not qualified to give a guided tour, I did gain a sense of where things lie. I'll be happy to have you along then. So for this group, it will be you, me, and Uriange. Give me a moment afterwards, and I'll supply you with all the details of Nadana's request. Consider this hall our rendezvous point once our respective tasks are complete. May our investigations prove fruitful.
When our father disowned us, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. It wasn't until much later that his words began to sink in, that I began to feel the weight of what it meant. Do you remember when the decision was made to come to Charlien? Grahaus said that the Forum was determined to keep us in the dark and that Father's venomous performance was part of that strategy, to keep us at arm's length. Perhaps it was. Father argued with Grandfather on many occasions, but never with such dismissive contempt. And when he demanded what justifies the sacrifices we make in war, I honestly didn't know what to say. Neither did Alpha know, I know, but never for one moment did I believe we had made the wrong choice. So all I could do was fume silently. It was only afterwards that I realized how childish I had been, how being stubborn and self-righteous must run in the family. If I could have just mustered a civil response, then things might have turned out differently. They must be fairy and goods to Labyrinthos. A vast complex beneath the island. Charlian is famous for archiving knowledge from around the world. Well, that knowledge is not preserved exclusively in dusty tomes and desiccated samples. Our living library, comprised of all manner of flora and fauna, is housed and studied within that underground facility. Still, that did seem to be an unusually large shipment. When I lived here, it was rare to even see such cargo transported by boat. Wait! Didn't you hear something in the last stand about the gleaners coming and going more than usual? Well, I think they're the ones we saw manning those boats. And gleaners answer to the forum. If the appearance of the Telophoroi prompted this sudden burst of activity, then Labyrinthos may hold a clue as to what the forum is planning.